for it. But I'm gonna walk through uh, the, the patches, the different patches that you use. First, we're gonna cut the holes. I'm gonna explain to you which ones we're doing. And then we're gonna run the wire and then we're going to patch them themselves. So you see which one works easiest for you. One of the tips that I thought was really good was to tape a bag underneath everything that you do because of the dust. I never tried it, but what a really neat trick, the old bag trick. Part of the beef that I get is that the hole's too big. Well, the reason why I do this is when I'm trying to get to the, the next stud, it's big enough that I can get to this stud and I can get to that stud. So even if I was in the middle, one hole for two different, uh, or one hole in the drywall for two different studs. Now, let me show you this. So I have my paddle bit. I now feel where the stud is and I can drill through. The downside is, whoopsie. <laughs> the downside is that I don't know if there's any wires on the other side. But remember, I drilled another hole over here and I can feel the wires and I know what I can do. They say, well, why not just drill a hole in the middle, right on the stud and you can get it from both sides instead of two patches. Okay, that's fair enough. So let's give that a try. Okay, we don't know what's underneath the, the drywall, the paint and everything else. So we're just gonna assume that it's smooth sailing. Why not just do that, okay? Well, let's give it a try. Well, look at that, there was screws there, huh? And if you're a good drywaller, there's probably glue there too. Look what happened to the slug. It came out in pieces. Now I've got to get drywall and then cut that out, right? The other slug was perfect. To me, for one, I'd like to be able to get my hand in there. If I've got to push that wire, I've got to be able to guide it and pick it, you know, and grab it. Well, this is a nice big hole. People want me to use smaller hole saws. I've got to get my hand in there. Yes, I'm a bigger dude, you know, as you can see. But a smaller hole, I'd never get my hand in there. And then you're drilling, you're gonna to get to the edge of the wood because it's at an angle. So you're gonna drill right at the angle, you run the risk of someone running a screw in with hanging a picture or whatever. That's why you have to be an inch and a quarter from the edge of your stud back to the, the, the outside of your hole. This way, it kind of creates a hard way to go. Now, if I were to use a smaller hole saw, I'd never get my hand in there. It simply wouldn't work. So people may have that suggestion, but it simply doesn't work. I, I can't do that. It's, uh, it's next to impossible. Or they say, notch the studs. Well, I don't want to mess with the integrity of the stud. I just, I just don't want to do that. Notch the stud? I'm sitting there notching all day long. Why don't you just do that one and put the slug back in? I get a lot of, why don't you just run a straight edge? Mark it out and just, just pull that out, just drill the studs out. It's a lot easier. Okay, well, let's try that. I'm not saying what's right or what's wrong. That's up to you. But I'm just gonna show you what you could run into and there's a reason why I do it my way. All right, let's give it a try. Again, this is painted over, it's years. So let's, let's just see what we do, okay? We take your drywall, or your, I'm telling your razor knife, and run it right along the drywall. Now let's say this is, uh, huh, you wanted to run six, 10 feet. Okay. Score that about five or six times. Okay, now that we're done scoring and sweating, we say, oh man, look at this. That's a straight line. I could take that drywall right back out. I could take it out and put it right back in place. Well, but the thing is, ah, shoot, you know what we didn't anticipate? Drywall screws. Drywallers use those to put up uh, drywall. Now, now you have to get a perfect piece because we're always imperfect here, right? You gotta get a perfect piece and put it in there. Take these drywall screws out. Go get you some drywall because you went 10 feet. Go get you 10 feet of drywall and then go ahead and try and patch it. But I am going to patch this, but I'm gonna show you what a pain in the neck it can be. But this is the other reason why I don't do that. It's another technique too that's kind of smart. Okay, you've marked your hole. You'd rather use this than a hole saw. Fair enough, you don't want the dust. 
tape your bag onto the bottom of it. We got less cleanup. So we get to cutting this out. So let's do that first, right? We've got our slug and we've got the back side of the drywall that we cut, okay? I'm just gonna mark it out all the way around. We know our measurement's gonna be right on the money. Again, this takes a little time. It's a good way to do it, but if you got 10 of them, to me it takes a little time. But okay, here we go. So what you do is you score those lines with the razor knife, or you go all the way down, okay? Don't cut yourself all the way down. Ooh, bad one, but whatever. You take them and you crack it all the way around. Ooh. And you peel the drywall like the paper. Yeah. There. Okay, now trim it up, pop her back in. But again, I'm going to show you that at the end. I'm going to I'm going to mud all of these. So, okay. The baseboard trick is the secret of the pros. It's truly the secret of the pros. It's not some hidden secret, but it's something you wouldn't think of. <clears throat> you have baseboard beneath your outlet. Okay. And instead of making these holes and all these patches, just take the baseboard off. You're going to have paint and caulk in there, what have you. Just run your razor knife right down the corner of it. Okay. And then remove the baseboard. Now it's going to have nails in it. You're going to need to find your stud. So when you have your cat's paw, you can pull it out, screwdriver, however you want to do it. It works pretty good. You can get a few dents here and there, <clears throat> but it's a lot better than all these patches. So bear with Right on this, each side of the stud. And they don't even have to be perfect. You could knock holes with your hammer if you wanted to, make it easier and just drill through. It doesn't matter because when you put the, this uh, the trim back up, you're not gonna see it anyways. Don't go above or beyond your line, but you could just stick your drywall saw in there, turn the hole, or you just take your drill and drill through. But we don't know if there's wires going down. That's the little bit of the downfall. If you make a big hole here, you got a bunch of big holes, then the uh, baseboard is wobbling on the studs. So it's a great technique but when you don't know what's on the other side, you got to make bigger holes. You can run into some trouble, but that's a yeah, that's a, a good way to get away from all these patches. And maybe you might not need patches. So uh, those are your techniques. So now I'm going to show you how to patch each one up. Now that our wall looks like Swiss cheese, unintentional, uh, then you, we could run our wire. I could run it here, right through. Oh, that's the hole that I drilled. Okay, great. And you know, if you have no insulation in the wall, I've got I've got videos on how to fish your wires, but this you get the gist of it. I've, I've got great videos, different techniques. Look, it's right there. Pull it out, you run your wire to the other spot. Easy enough. If you have two holes here, you can fill it, guide it through. If you're going over here, you can fill your wire, you know, if you ran it through and you just grab your wire and run on, run on, run on, okay? And that's basically how you get it from one to the other. And the baseboard, you run it through those holes into your plug, and so you don't see anything, you know? So, um, yeah, all the ways, all of them work. There's a million ways to skin a cat, and I'm giving you all the examples that I know as an electrician not a drywaller, and I'm not going to sit here and do finished drywall either. I'm just going to show you how I patch them. Okay, and the first patch, the one that I use, there's a reason why I use a bigger hole too. So I can get my hand and the backer back there. Big piece of wood, so it's nice and solid. Run your screws right into it. Do that with all of them. Okay, now you have your slug. It's perfect, remember? We didn't hit any studs with that. Right back in there, screw it to your backer bar. We have the hole saw from here. Put it in, screw that down. Now remember, we don't want to go where the wire is. 
I'm gonna put a screws below. We'll put a screws on top of the hole, and then we know that we're safe, right? Well, you went to Home Depot. You bought the little two by four sheets, two by two sheets, and you measured straight edge, and you got that right. Okay, well, good. So, if you prefer that method, good for you. Mesh tape. You could use the, the paper tape for it, but for all intents and purposes. Mesh tape over the top seam and mesh tape over the bottom seam. All right, cold patch. Remember, we did that one? It just simply fits in a hole. Push it in there. Then we don't have to use any tape. That's what's neat about that. Okay, let me mud all these real quick and they're gonna be done. Fair enough? Okay, we filled in all of our patches. Now we're gonna do the mudding. Again, remember, we're not drywall experts. All we wanna do is get the basics. And if you feel comfortable, then you can try doing the finish. I'm just doing the rough. Got a trough, got my, I don't even know what you'd call it. See, an electrician, right? I'm not gonna call it a putty knife. You can't make me. But anyways, I make sure that it's bigger than the, than the hole that we made. Now, some people say you could use caulk in, inside uh, around here so it doesn't expand and retract because once we put this in and it dries, it's gonna suck into that hole. Big deal, just a thin layer. So maybe when the drywallers get there, they're like, oh, okay, I can go over this. Then you're gonna, it's gonna get bigger and bigger uh, when you go over it. But that's all I do, a little bit. I fill in the holes, I push into the holes. Just like so, I don't try to go any thicker and I'll leave for the drywallers or if I want to do another coat. Same thing over here. Slop it in there, make sure it gets in the holes. You get the idea. With the tape, we have to put it on both sides. It's, it's gonna be a little bit bigger. It's gonna be bevel, so this has to be a wider uh, strip of drywall mud. But for all intents and purposes, boom, there we are. I wanna make sure that we cover all that mesh though. Keep the pressure on the outsides. Okay, uh, big deal, okay. You get the point, put the mud on the outsides of it. Go over it. Then you, then you have something for the paper to stick on. Put it back in there, okay? Do that. Work the excess out of there. A nice, healthy helping of uh, mud. You're going right over it. Whoops. You get the gist. And then what we did for the baseboard, just mud over those holes. That's it. I mean, that's really it. These are the one, two, three, four, five different ways to patch when running electrical if you have to make a hole. It's only if this is just to give you the ideas of some of, some of the techniques that people have talked about. I'd say six techniques, because I really like taping the bag underneath of everything you do, and so that fine dust balls in the bag. But uh, that's about it. Uh, like I say, check me out on Front Door. Uh, like, please, I need you to like it, and just share my, uh, my channel. You get information for free. This helps me to keep going, because you know this is my money and my time, so at least you can do is at least watch and go, 